Alright, so with the Fortnite news video just uploading, I will be doing more Amstrad videos. Why? It's because uh, season ending in 9 days. Kind of like what we did with the device event, we did it whenever this one season ends. We're doing Amstrad videos again. Uh, we just actually start with Dio. But today I'm actually going to take another route. route. We're going to be reviewing season 3 as a whole. Alright, we're going to be reviewing season 3 and giving it a score out of 10. So, honestly, let's get right into the video. And yeah, I'm trying to figure out what skin I should wear for this. I'm gonna say, you know what? I will look at the game decide what skin to wear for this video. Keith okay, Yonder. Good pick. Well, now let's talk about this, this season. Now, we're gonna go in Battle Lab and go to all of the locations. And let's talk about, so first off, let's talk about some pros about this season. Uh, I think we got a lot more content than last season. Sure, last season we got an event and a lot of storyline, and that's probably the biggest downside for the season, which we'll talk about on the cons. And also, but last, last season we only got three, I believe, like three or two major items, right? First one. Now, the first season launch, honestly, is a really massive content. But some of the big things of updates are helicopters. Uh, proximity mines, and we had a Kingsman umbrella, which I please add that to creative, please. I want it back. I missed the Kingsman umbrella, and finally, Deadpool's pistols. Right? Those are the four things that came to the game. You know, honestly, that's that's not a lot of content, right? We got, and of course, we got a lot of storyline stuff, right? So, I what this season does is. The content is spread out, you know? The first day, we got a new shotgun. Last season, we didn't really get any new guns, I believe, right? Like, no actual physically weapons. Sure, they're basically the mythic weapons are new guns, but... I don't say that, right? We got a shotgun. I got a brand new, like, shotgun. A brand new sounds and everything, right? Chit, to charge shotgun. We got the shockwave launcher. I mean, because you can say last season, right? Well, it gets like that. And yeah, and then after that, the next day, right? The next... Week. The week right after that, we get the Firefly Jar. Another week after that, we get the Flare Gun and the Portable Workbenches. Two weeks later, we get Cars. Three or four zero. So yeah, really, really nice. Alright, so, that's some of the big pro right there about, the pro, about this season. And now, let's get to the locations. Now, the first location we're heading over to right now is Caddy Corner. And, um, Caddy Corner is probably the lowest ranked location for me, personally. Not because I hate it, it's because of the henchmen here. The toasters are super annoying. They all ha half of them have P90s and SMGs. At least, like, and, um, unlike, um, Authority and even Fortella, they're not all spread out. I mean, that's probably the biggest flaw with the Fortella also. Is that the mythic boss is super hard to find there sometimes. If you don't know where she is exactly, you're gonna have a hard time. But yeah, so Kit is always around the gas station or the main area. So yeah, it's pretty easy to find, but the only mass like I said, the massive downfall here is all the henchmen here, right? They're all clamped in one area. It's kinda of like the Shadow Agency, right? Destroyed agency last season, right? It was completely destroyed and you know, all the henchmen were together. Like everyone was together. Was that was kind of annoying last season? I'm not gonna lie, but it wasn't super bad, right now. Right, so now let's go see the next location. The next location I have, we're gonna. So I'm gonna use location in general. It's gonna. Be, it's an okay location. Not gonna lie. Actually, while we're heading to the next location, let's talk about the another two cons. Sharks and Marauders. Now, Sharks in the middle for me, because Sharks are, I think, a really, really interesting idea. They're a vehicle at the same time an enemy, right? So, these Sharks are actually, in my opinion, actually a really cool idea for the game, right? I really do think it's a really cool idea. But, they jump, but they, whenever they jump out of the water, it gets really annoying, especially how many they were when this release was first launched. Yeah, alright, now we're at the Authority, and now we're gonna talk about the Authority. So, the Authority, yeah, it's, it is better than Agency. You know why? The drum gun got nerfed, right? The drum gun got nerfed. Uh, there's le I feel like there's less henchmen here. Henchmen are more spread out, and they have less aimbot. 
this does not mean that I have enough aimbot here, right? Because me, I'm each best. I've been playing a little bit of lo friend, lobbies with my friends where I bought lobbies. I, I don't know if this were just bad or not, but yeah, we got we've been getting aimbotted quite a bit here, right? We're getting aimbotted quite a bit, and it was not fun. So yeah, um, so after, and the Jules' glider grappler is kind of annoying. Oh yeah, and also kids shotgun and charge kids shotgun launcher and the shotgun are so good that it could be annoying. But the the glider the glider gun just gives you instant high round, which is okay. But I feel like it's better than last season glider gun because last season it kind of feels like it's worse actually because. Last season's Glacker Gun, sure, you didn't need to fall in or something, but it was super easy to get high ground, right? You could shoot and trick shot with it. This one you can't really trick shot with, you know? So, yeah, it's kind of worse in that aspect, but honestly, it is kind of better at the same time. Alright, guys, so now let's talk about the next location on the map. Let's talk about for the Fortello. Now, let's talk about another... Con is probably the biggest con we have for today. It was the last of storyline content. This season has been super like chapter two, season one, super dry on storyline. Now we could say now it has more storyline than chapter two, season one, but uh, but right after we got the device event, I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna get event every season now. It's not looking like it, guys. Sadly. You know, it was kind of a shame, too, because I was really, really looking forward to the season of what the store returned. But, yeah, there was no storyline stuff. The biggest thing we have for storyline is the spaceships. That's literally it. Sionis spaceship is the big, best thing about storyline. Coral Castle could kind of be considered storyline with the water receding and what that whirlpool actually was once to be. Let's talk about Coral Castle a little bit. Yeah, so, as we head over to the Fortella, uh, let's look at, let's talk about Rickety Rig. Rickety Rig is kind of a boring location, honestly. I actually almost forgot that it was there. So yeah, Rickety Rig, like, honestly, it was, an, it was so spread out, too. It's just Rickety Rig is not fun. I know a lot of people like, a lot of people don't really like Rickety Rig. And I can completely agree on that. Uh, Rickety Rig can get a, uh, it's, it's meh, it's meh. It's not okay like Caddy Corner. It's like, it's a meh, so a lower store. Now the Fortella. Uh, Fortella, in my opinion, is pretty, pretty cool looking. I, li I dig the design choice aspect, but it has probably the most henchmen on the map. Probably the most henchmen, but they are super spread out. They are super spread out. That's also kind of a flaw for the location. But sometimes, um, ocean is kind of hard to find here. Just, it's probably just me, but some of y'all can agree with me, right? That's right. Ocean just likes to wander. See go anywhere she wants to. Yeah, uh, honestly, I'm gonna give the Fortella a good, right? It's, it's not perfect, it's good. Now we're talking about the highest ranked location of the season. My opinion is gonna be Coral Castle. Now, Coral Castle is a really, in my opinion, a really, really great a surprise, right? We're all, we're all like, oh my god, something under that whirlpool, and when the water is going down and down, the leaks are coming out, it's like, like, this could be Atlantis, right? And then we got Coral Castle, which is not saying, we're not saying it is Atlantis, right? Stay friend to it, but honestly, a Coral Castle is such a unique place that I can forgive it, right? Coral Castle is super unique to the map, because half of it is submerged. In the water, it's actually kind of like this. Actually, is the deepest place of the map. You think about it because you get to actually build up there, and if it was in the water still, right? This place would be super hard to get to, right? If swimming underwater was a feature, right? It would be super hard to get to. You probably need some scuba gear. Also, epic. What the hell happened to swimming underwater? But I'm just saying. I wouldn't want to swim underwater. Now there are some game breaking glitches like this. No, we. Or did I pass? Yeah, there are some glitches over here. Like, or whatever the hell this is, right? This is, this is a weird looking glitch. Probably a texture error, but... Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff here. Some of it can be green breaking. Honestly, it's a lot of, it's just a lot of bugs. And I, I know Epic are... 
really try their best from home, but I'm, I'm just saying there is a little buggy location. You know, even from the beginning, it was buggy, you know? Look, see right here, this is kind of a bug, you know? Clutch underwater. Water still works like water, look, see? Still works like water, but you can still go underneath the map like this, so. Yeah, that has a little bit of bugs, but honestly, without with all the bugs aside, Coral Castle, in my opinion, is a beautiful POI to look at. So the eyes looks really, really cool. The coral stands out. The structures look like a looks like a lot, literally the Lost City of Atlantis. And what, let's, let's not forget the best feature of the whole entire season: the horns. The horns at Coral Castle is the best part about season three. I don't want to hear. It. The worst part. Oh yeah, TikTok emotes. Let's talk about that. Fuck you, TikTok emotes. No, no, yeah, I'm saying right now I hate TikTok emotes. Yeah, it should not have been something for the season. But honestly, right, the horns are the best thing, right? And nobody will answer anymore, too. Now, I got my green fist, and I can just do this. For however long I want. I make beautiful songs. And that is the best part of the season. Now, of course, let's actually tell... Yeah, that's pretty much it for the review for the season, honestly. Uh, there's only a couple of things I can say, but honestly, I'm gonna give the season a higher rating than season two because I really did not like last season. That was kind of shit. I'm not gonna lie. So my, well, it's my opinion. I'm gonna give the season an, a solid seven out of ten. The lack of storyline really does push it back. Season last season got a six point five out of ten, right? I think I, I think I rank right I'm a, the ranking looking back. It got six point five out of ten with the event. Right if it wasn't for the event, it would it would literally shattered the season because uh, last season had so many flaws and I feel like the season really does you know, fix most of those flaws. And also with the lack also with a lot of content within Party Royale, which was an event every week this season. Yeah, that was really nice and I really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed today's Season 3 review. Please subscribe and let me guys know your scores down below for Season 3. Peace out. Peace out.